What's going on guys? Dots Gaming here and today I'm bringing you on my next video on the Dragon Hold PTS. And for our patch notes reading here, this next video is going to cover class changes coming in Dragon Hold. There was a lot of class changes. Uh a lot again. We we just went through this with Scalebreaker and we're going through it again. Um so let me get into these and I think you guys will better see what I what I mean instead of me trying to preface this. So we're gonna start with the necromancer changes. Now, this is the dev comment that we have for necromancer. Due to many of the current targeting issues with corpses and tether abilities, we are allowing Shock Siphon and its morphs, as well as the restoring tether and its morphs, to bypass the global cooldown. We are working on alternative methods to improve the targeting for these abilities, as well as improve the reliability of created corpses and their durations, but we're not ready to implement them quite yet. We are aware of the frustrating nature of attempting to use these abilities while we've added stopgap measure in the meantime until we can properly solve the issue. I don't know how much this is really going to help. Maybe it'll help a little bit because you could just mash the key, I guess, as much as you want until the tether and 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 whatnot actually makes. But you know, I, the the tethers have been so, and the corpse targeting has been clunky for a really long time. I'm glad they can finally like be like, okay, wow, we actually do need to do something about this. But it does kind of stink that once again, Necromancer's got to wait another patch in order to get more reliability on its skills. There is also no mention of blast bones in this patch notes, which again, kind of is a little upsetting. So instead, Necromancer is just gonna eat a bunch of fat nerfs. So Boneyard, increase the base cost of this ability and it's morphs up to 5,000 from 3780. And we also are gonna decrease the damage by 33%. Frozen Colossus, this ability and its morphs now only apply major vulnerability to enemies on the final hit rather than any enemy. This will reduce the total duration to three seconds down from five. Shocking Siphon, decrease the damage per tick of this ability and its morphs by 33%. Skeletal Mage, decrease the damage per hit of this ability and its morphs by 50%. Bone Goliath Transformation, Pummeling Goliath, fix an issue where this activating the special bash attack from this morph will not turn your character to face the direction you cast it in. So, <clears throat> Necromancer ate a bunch of fat nerfs, dude. A, a, a ton of big nerfs. Now, speaking from a PvE perspective, I can definitely see why the change to Frozen Colossus happened. Frozen Colossus was just doing really well in a PvE environment. Um, it was just part of the reason that you saw everyone running as many Necros as they were, because Major Vulnerability is just an insanely good debuff to have on your enemy. So I can understand this from a PvE perspective. Unfortunately, I think from a PvP perspective, this is going to hurt Necromancer quite a bit. Um... Only having that major vulnerability on the final smash where most people will kind of be able to dodge roll out of it by the final smash is going to kind of, I think, hit, hurt the skill's usability in PvP. I think there will still be people using it because if you do get that major vuln to land, it's going to be a huge damage increase. But uh, I don't know if we're going to see it used as much by Necromancers and especially like Magro already was kind of struggling to begin with. And now having this kind of be, be hit is a, uh, is a bit of a blow to the class. Uh, Skeletal Mage getting a 50% damage nerf is big oof as well. Um, normally, I'd be more upset about this, but when you see the rest of the patch notes, I mean, this is kind of just on par with the rest of the massive sweeping nerfs we're seeing this patch. Um, so, I, I mean, I guess I understand it. I don't think there's like, I, I think there's very little chance of me using this in PvP now because you already can't control who it hits. But now that the damage is cut in half, you know, there's even less of a reason to use it. Um, I also think having skills cost 5,000 is just, a, it's just a lot. So I want to cover this actually before I move into the notes, like the rest of the notes. I get that they wanted to cut down damage this patch after we saw the, the insane dot metal last patch with Scalebreaker. And just the rise of damage and how much damage has gone up and power creep we've seen in the game. And so I guess they're doing this as like a temporary fix to that, to that, like, uh, to that power creep, I guess. So that's why they're nerfing things by 33%, 50%. Why are we on top of that increasing our costs astronomically? That is kind of where you're going to see I'm really lost this patch. And I don't understand why we're doing that. And it also super confuses me how last patch we buffed dot damage by like 67%, 50%, 40%, blah, 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 blah. And now we're seeing nerfs from anywhere, or anywhere from 50 to 67%. We also saw nerfs last patch too. And skills are getting nerfed even further. I, I just, I don't understand. I don't understand why we, 
the the game was heading in a direction last patch. Granted, a lot of people may have not liked it with the whole dot meta and everything, but the game was heading in a direction. And I feel like now we literally have just turned the car around and are now driving the other way. It, it's just the last patch and this patch have really confused me on what Zoss's direction and what their intent is with combat in the game. I, I don't know what they're thinking anymore. I don't know what they're trying to do. I don't know what they're trying to accomplish. Um, because who knows? Maybe come quarter one next, next you know, of 2020, everything will be buffed again by a gabillion percent. And then costs will go down to seven. Like, I, I, I have no idea at this point. I, I don't know what to expect. And I think the thing that frustrates me the most isn't the damage nerfs, okay? I can rationalize those with power creep in the game, how high damage is now, the dot meta and everything. I can I can easily rationalize the damage reductions, not the percentages. I think they went way overboard. I'm going to get to that when I get to some other classes. The costs are just ridiculous, man. The costs are ridiculous. Like, eruption on my Breton Dragon Knight in light armor costs nearly 5,000 Magicka. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, I don't get why you're going to slash damage this hard and then slash sustain. I, I don't understand. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So we're going to continue to move into the, la uh, the, the next part of the notes here. So this combat and gameplay, I guess I can cover this uh, here because I guess this is a lot of class stuff. In our continuing efforts to improve server performance, we have refactored re how sprint functions on the uh, functions on the back end and have made some changes to that design. On foot sprint will largely function the same as it has in the past, though we've decreased stamina cost of sprinting, which will reduce result in being able to sprint longer. That's pretty good. We also notice stamina drain is more fluid on the UI. Very nice. Like on foot sprint, mounts will now stop sprinting when their stamina is fully drained. However, we've decreased the stamina cost of mount sprint and greatly increased both stam and base recovery for mounts. Don't like this. I don't like this. I really hope that this doesn't cause us to make a horse simulator, even uh, in Cyrodiil, even more horse simulating. We'll be closely monitoring how these... Uh, changes affect your ability to traverse Tamriel or open to feedback. An effort to improve performance. The visual effects on player abilities have been updated. These changes focus on which players can see specific parts of visual effect and when the visual effects will be removed from view. Blah, 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 blah. It's basically just a bunch of Templar abilities. Sun shield, puncturing, strikes, Aurora javelin, and radial sweep. Updating the more widely used champion point passives and nodes to be handled more efficiently on the server. Very good. I always like to see stuff like that. Updating the tooltip text for major and minor buffs. Destroying a siege weapon will no longer proc item sets. Siege weapons that can proc status effects will no longer do that. Continually rotating your camera will no longer cause certain abilities to have a delay. Fix an issue where you can resurrect other players while remaining invisible. Arrow no longer, arrows will no longer blink in and out of resistance. Stun abilities such as Rune Prison or Petrify will no longer fail to stun targets that are not currently CC'd or CC immune. Fix an issue where dealing physical poison or disease damage over time would break stealth. Pets that could not deal damage now have received therapy for their anger management and will no longer attempt to pull all owners into combat with nearby enemies unless provoked. Adjust in many knockback abilities to send the target flying faster so that they reach their end position sooner and can begin taking action quicker. Uh, this, set, this change makes me feel bad, especially with the change to dizzying swing, but we're going to cover that in another video when we actually go over the weapon changes. Adjusted the standards from damage over time abilities to no longer deal approximately 2.5 damage of a traditional spamble attack, such as for, uh, Force Shock or Love Whip, and will now deal 1.25 the damage over their duration. I, I think this is way too low, dude. 1.25 is too low. You're going to see dot damage is like literally irrelevant next patch. And we're going it, to, it's amazing to me how based off of the way this patch is and next patches. And this is why, like, I always get nervous asking for nerfs because Zoss not only nerfed dots, they nerfed them into irrelevancy. Uh, so area or damage over time abilities will now once again mirror the damage of their single target counterparts instead of dealing 33% less damage to ensure that they do not always beat out their single target counterparts. They will now cost approximately 66% more resources Per second to maintain their single target counterparts up from 30%. These standard durations have increased in 10 seconds, up from 8 seconds as well. Now, the reason I'm covering this in the class changes, some of you might be like, Dots, why are we going over this? This is supposed to be the class abilities. I'm going over this because this is going to explain why they did certain stuff in the class um, section. So I just want to make sure to, to explain this here. Healing over time abilities, both single target and area of effect, no longer adhere to damage over time standards. They will not receive any adjustments this patch. Many morphs to that change of behavior of their original parents, such as the Eruption or Slower Barrage, are not fully adhered to some of these adjustments, such as power or cost. Yeah, you're damn right. Frickin' Eruption costs so much. But they've been kept within range power to ensure that it will not wildly overperform with, compared to similar abilities. Player source snares are now are additive with movement speed rather than multiplicative. This will reduce the overall effectiveness in snares PvP scenarios. Always like to see a change like that. Very good stuff. 
Auras from abilities such as Ebon Armory would no longer fall off for allies when bar swapping wearing an active five piece. Glad to see that bug that bug finally fixed. Now, this shit doesn't make any sense. I don't understand why they did this. Abilities and item sets that grant physical and spell resistance now grant an equal amount of both as a singular stat armor rather than two separate stats. So basically, okay. Uh, they also got rid of Major and Minor Resolve, and just made Major Resolve and Minor Resolve that now grant physical and spell resistance. Now, I don't understand why they did this, because when you read this, right, doesn't this give you the impression that physical and spell resistance are going away? No, they're not. This is literally just for tooltips. Like, if you look at the tooltip of, um, of Fortified Brass now, right, it just says, like, 1441 armor, 3160 armor. But that armor means you get both physical and spell resistance. So I don't understand why they felt the need to, like, create this imaginary stat that isn't on the stat sheet but actually means two separate stats. But physical and spell resistance still exist. Like, I just don't understand the purpose of this. You know? I, I, I don't know. And, like, they, like I said, they turned major and minor ward and they baked that into major and minor resolve. Um... I mean, that I could kind of understand, but I don't understand why the whole, like, oh, this isn't going to be called resistance on sets anymore. It's going to be called armor, but it's going to actually grant you resistance. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that just means that they're increasing the armor of the value of, like, of the, you know, maybe that's, like, the rationalization. Like, you know, because uh, getting armor from a set increases both resistances. So by making the, the item set bonuses armor, it just means that you're getting more of both. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know why this was done. Maybe maybe that's what it was, but I don't know. By the way, pen's not being changed at all. That's that's uh, fracture and breach. That's not being changed at all. Disease status effect will now uh, will report as delivering minor defile, not major, because it was always doing minor. So now let's get into the last, the rest of the classes here. Get into the rest of the fun. So, Dragonite, Art and Flame, Fiery Breath. This ability is morphs. Now less 10 seconds, up from 8. Increase the cost to 3510 from 2808. Oh Reduce the dot of this ability by 47%. Engulfing Flames. This morphs bonus flame damage will now scale off your spell damage. 1% for every 333 spell damage you have up to a maximum of to original 10%. This is a good change. This actually gives you a reason to bring Magic Decays to a trial. I like this. This is good. We're going to get to the my, my feel on the rest of this when we're done. Searing Strike. This ability in Smurfs now lasts 10 seconds from base, up from 8 seconds. Increase the cost to 3,000, basically, from 2160. This ability in the Smurfs are now gain a new functionality of immediately applying their respective status effect upon an enemy upon cast. Reduce the dot of this ability by 60%. Actually, fuck it. We'll go over it now. They nerfed the dots of these skills so much that Volatile Armor is now one of our hardest hitting dots. How does that make sense? I, I don't... I don't understand. They, like, 60%. 60%, dude. And, and it costs so much more now. Like, this is 3K up from 2160. This is 3510 up from 2808. And we have seen 50 to 60% nerfs. And not only that, we're getting these, these huge cost increases. I don't get it. I don't get it, dude. I don't understand, okay? And the reason I, I'm so confused is because I've been perusing the PTS forums a lot just to kind of see what people have said so that when I remade these patch note videos, I, I didn't want to use the ones for my stream. I wanted to make them fresh. I wanted to see what people have found. Some guy has been doing testing. Dots are basically like a DPS loss now, okay? Some guy, he did a test where he basically did a stereotypical damage rotation where he basically put, you know, did the dots on his bar, the spammable, went through the whole, you know, apply all the dots, use your spammable X number of times, the dots need to be refreshed, go back through, blah, blah, blah. He did that, and then he also tested what happens if I just use, like, Endless Hail slash um, Wall of Elements in order to just keep up my back bar enchant as well as my Maelstrom weapons, and then we're just gonna basically put on passives, passive increases, to just make our spammable hit harder. And he found that those rotations, if I can even call it that, were dealing just as much, if not more damage, as normal dot rotations. I, I just don't get it, man. I don't get it. And I, know so, and, and I know some people have been saying a lot, and I've been seeing this all over Twitter and all over the forums, just adjust, bro. The good players are going to adjust. 
you know, that's the fun of it, blah, blah, blah. And I understand that, yeah, obviously people that like to play the game are going to adjust. Obviously, that, that doesn't need to be said. Obviously, if players want to remain competitive and continue to play well, they're going to adjust. It doesn't mean that changes are good for the game. It doesn't mean that the changes are healthy for the game. It doesn't mean that it's good that over 2019, Zoss has completely changed their game every two to three months. That's not healthy. Could you imagine if another game like League of Legends did that, where every three months, the meta was 100% different? It doesn't make any sense. If you look at the Elsewhere patch, if you look at the Scalebreaker patch, and if you look at the future Dragonhold patch, they look like three separate games. I can, I understand wanting to change the meta up, you know, at least once a year because it keeps the game fresh. It just gives new players ways to adjust, new things to try out, changes things up. And that that I, I understand. But you look at players who play the game a lot and people are getting exhausted and burnt out from, from changing things up every two or three months. What about your casual player who's struggling to keep up to begin with? How where people, you know, people who make builds or whatnot, they finally figure out what's good. They figure out the way you, you need to play to be to, to do well. We output build guides. People take the time to get the equipment. They build it up and then bam, within the next patch, that build is irrelevant. It's exhausting. It's getting really, really tiring. Really tiring. And I, I hope that this stops at some point and they just pick a direction and they just continue down that direction. I'm sorry to put this rant right here, but it, it needs to be said. They need to pick a direction and just walk that way for better or for worse at this point because this constant ping pong balancing is exhausting people. And I know I've seen so many people, why all the hate? Why all the hate? This is why. Because people were tired, tired of just, okay, I've, I, I understand what they want to do with the game now. I understand what, what they, how they want us to play the game now. I figured it out. We're, we're, we're ready to go. Just kidding. It's now completely different again. So this is literally, as far as I'm concerned, this is Scalebreaker 2.0. As far as I'm concerned. And at least that's how it feels. And you're going to see that that other stuff was nerfed just as hard. Okay? I know I'm obviously complaining on DK more than others because DK is one of my main classes, but... It's just frustrating, man. It's just this this patch, these notes have really, they're really frustrating me. So anyway, let me continue. Earthen Heart, Molten Weapons, Igneous Weapons. This morph now increases the duration further to 42 seconds at rank 1 up from 32. Also increases the radius to 36 meters up from 28. Stone Fist. Uh, I'll, I'll cover my thoughts after I read this. Rework this ability to be stamina-based, spammable attack. It now deals physical damage with a reduced range of 15 meters down from 28. Increase the damage by 66%, but no longer deals da double damage if the target was stunned. This ability no longer stuns the target outright, but instead applies a stack of stagger to the enemy. After five seconds, the enemy will be st the, stunned by the next stone fist cast at them, including other dragon knights. If this target was stunned, all stacks of stagger are removed. Reduce the cost of 34, uh, 43 from 4,050. This is still pretty high for, uh, for a, for a quote-unquote spammable. Stone Giant. This morph no longer grants minor resolve after casting, but instead enhances the stagger mechanic where enemies affected take 25 extra damage from your attack per stack. No, you did not read this wrong. It's literally 25. No, this is not buffed by your, by your uh, resources. It is 25. Ah, uh, okay. Like, I... The, so I guess we get a, what, like 125 extra damage at max stacks? whoop de doo Wow we Obsidian Shard, this morph remains healer-focused ability. Increased the healing by 3.3% since it was missing rank up progression. This morph now deals fire damage instead of magic damage. <sighs> okay. So this is me personally, as somebody who plays Stam DK a lot. And I can't imagine as somebody who's played a Stam DK main for a really long time. The fact that this is considered the identity that Stam DK is getting, and I hate to be so like rude about it, is laughable. I, I I've seen some people be like, "Oh, this is pretty cool." Blah, blah, blah. I think this is this is the dumbest shit ever. Like, I'm gonna make a video that goes over this. It it's literally they didn't change the animation. You literally take a rock and you throw it at your target. That's 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 Stone Fist, boys. You literally pick up a rock and you chuck it at your target really fast. It, uh, this is the definition, man, of just a missed opportunity to give Stam DK some sort of identity. You know, they could have done a much better job with this. They, they, I talked about this on my stream. First of all, they, they could have done something with Voltile and Hardened Armor. 
where they could have made volatile armor actually fire damage, and they could have made hardened armor into some sort of poison slash rock based armor that actually gives you a feeling of like I'm playing a stam DK, you know, something for stam. They could have also, okay, if we wanted to go with stone fist, because let's be honest, barely anybody used stone fist, okay, some people did, but it was really, really niche, not a lot of people used it. So if we want to continue down stone fist and say, okay, no stam whip, we don't want to do poison whip, we want to do something with stone fist, they should have reworked the uh the spell effect of this skill because it sucks <laughs> like it's terrible they could have, have have made some sort of like big stone fist come out of the ground and like hit your target they could have made stone fist like your weapon turned into this big stone weapon and you like smash your opponent over the head with it they could have made it like they could have done so much with the spell effect from this skill to make it look and feel impactful but Instead, you just pick up a rock and chuck it at your opponent. And it, it's really expensive. Objectively, the effect is really... I, I think the effect is terrible. Like, it's just... This is just so... It's, in my opinion, this is so bad. This is just really, really bad. And I, and I, and I don't like it. And uh, I'm sure people have been playing... I've seen some people have been playing Stam DK for a while. They're like, oh, this is great. And other people that are like, this is the dumbest thing ever. So I guess maybe it's in the beauties in the eye of the beholder here. But me personally, I, I hate this. I think it's really silly. I think it's I think it's just kind of like a band-aid fix to be like, yeah, here's a skill no one uses. You know, let's make this uh, we'll make this stamp, chuck a rocket to your opponent. But I personally hate this. <clears throat> Nightblade. Assassination teleport strike, Lotus Fam. This morph now applies minor vulnerability to all enemies hit rather than just the original. Very cool. Increase the duration of 10% up from eight. Again, <laughs> decrease the damage per tick by 47%. Aspect of Terror. Fix an issue where this ability and source would fail to display animation if the animation was cancelled. Uh, Shadow Cloaked. Shadowy Disguise. Fix an issue where the critical bonus of this ability could be consumed by abilities that cannot critically strike. Summon Shade got wrecked. Decrease the damage per hit of this ability to Shadow Image by 42%. Fix an issue where the attacks from this ability and source were heavily desynced. Shadow Image. The morph got nerfed to 22 meters down from 28 since this meant the more we want this morph to operate on our gap closer or creator standards. This ability also... This, this also prevents confusion in areas where the tooltip range would increase or the teleport, but fail to actually increase. This is a this is a pretty hefty nerf, man. Six meters off shadow image, really important to uh, Nightblade survivability. This this is really oof. This is yikes. Dark Shade got a uh, hit decrease of fifteen percent, so not nearly as much as shadow image. Decrease the radius of the attack to six meters down. Uh, increase the radius up to six meters. I'm sorry, I'm too used to saying decrease to six meters down from up from five. The Shade will now use the area attack on a set timer rather than having a per chance to attack. Path of Darkness. Decrease the damage per tick of this ability by 33%. Siphoning. Decrease the damage per tick of this ability and its by 50%. Drain Power. This ability and its now grant major brutality and sorcery at a base. Power Extraction now also produces enemy spell damage. Soul Shred. Soul Shred got a really nice change. The Morph now also heals for half the damage you deal upon initial hit in order to help increase the defensive nature of the skill when you successfully cast it. This I like. Sorcerer. Daedric Summoning, Bound Armor, Bound Armanence. Rework this ability into an offensive skill. Activating the ability no longer grants block mitigation for three seconds, but instead it puts a 40 second duration uh, effect on your character that summons weapons bound, a, summons a bound dagger at any time you deal light attack damage or heavy attack damage with up to a maximum of four weapons being able to activate being, and being able to activate these in a given time. Reactivating the ability will cause the weapons to prime and quickly seek your target after a short delay. The ability continues to passively increase your maximum stamina and st de damage dealt with light attacks. This is a good change. I like the new bound ornaments. I'm going to make a video that showcases the uh, this, the new spell animation. I like the new bound ornaments. I tested it. The effect is cool. It, it, they did a really, really good job with it. I really, really like it. Um, this is uh, one of the, one of the best, I think they, man, they, this, this gives stamina Sork a feel. This gives Stam Sork a, an actual feel. Um, it's not like Stone Fist. Stone Fist is, is like laughable, but Bound Arminance is really, it's really nice. I, I think they did a really good job with it. Charge Lightning fix an issue where the synergy was not properly applied major berserk to the astronaut it came from. Summon Unstable Familiar. Reduce the damage of this ability as much by 17%. Is the basic uh, basic attack damage. Increase the cost to activate the special up to 4,500, up from 28 away. Increase the duration of the special active, though, up to 10 seconds, up from 8. Uh, the base cost summoning these abilities has been streamlined to 3510. The clan fear now scales off max stamps. So we have a stamp pet. Decrease the cost 
of special to active to 4,500, down from 48 to 8. The area of effect damage now deals the same uh, damage as the basic attack, but it hits 6, and it's in a 6 meter radius. Fix the issue with the AoE attack would cause the clan fear to reevaluate its purpose, blah, blah, blah. So, when you read that, you would kind of think like, oh, it's going to cost stamina now. It still costs Magicka. So, it costs Magicka to summon, it costs Magicka to use the effect, but it scales off of stam. So, I mean, I guess that's something. But I don't know. That's a that's a pretty hefty mag cost. It's a pretty hefty mag cost for for this. And uh, from Stam Sork, so I want to hear what you guys think. I don't play Stam Sork, so I can't really say if whether or not the fact that this causes magic and not stamina is is good or bad for the ability. I mean, if this did cost stamina, it'd have to be way less than forty five hundred, obviously. Um, but I want to know what you guys think about this. I, I, I don't really know what to think. I've been going back and forth. I've been going back like, well, it's a heal, and, you know, at least it does scale off Stam, and it's, it's the defensive nature, so, like, I don't know. Maybe I could justify a magic of cost, but it feels weird. Like, I, I want to know what you guys think. What you guys think about it. Summon Wing Twilight. They buffed the shit out of this. 87% increase for the base heal. 55% increase for the Matriarch. Whew! That is a, that is a hefty heal. Storm calling, bolt escape. The fatigue from this ability is more now only. No, oh, I guess that's a mistake with the uh, with the HTML. The fatigue from this ability and its morphs now apply only if you successfully teleport one meter or more instead of whenever you activate the ability. This ability and ball lightning morph no longer stun the target for four in a four meter radius from your origin location, but instead will stun the target in a six meter radius at your final location. Fix an issue where you can become stuck in place attempting to cast his ability and if it's morphs when the target was outside of your LOS. Ball of Lightning. This morph now ranks up in duration of the summon Ball of Lightning, which now lasts three seconds at rank four, up from two. This morph now also added two seconds of snare and mobilization to immunity after targeting. Shriek. This ability now creates a cone behind you after casting that damage and stuns enemies inside of it. The length is now 17 meters with a 40 degree arc, rather than being a 4 by 15 meter rectangle. This means the ability will require more precise aiming when attempting to land on top of an enemy. It will require less precise enemy when attempting to cast near an enemy. So Shriek still kind of maintains a lot of its similar functionality. You have to, you know, streak through somebody and it stuns behind them. While Ball of Lightning is going to, like, it stuns at the location that you land. It also has some uh, defensive nature to it as well with the uh, two seconds of snare and a mobilization immunity, which is pretty cool. So overall Shriek changes, I think, are, are, are nice. <laughs> Lightning Splash. Increase the base du uh, duration of this ability up to 10 seconds from 8. Increase the cost to nearly 5,000 up from 3,000. Reduce the damage per tick by 33%. Surge. This ability needs more of now right major brutality and sorcery at base. This is a good change. This is, again, like all I've been talking about, this is just wild. Templar. Adric Spear. Piercing, piercing Javelin. Reduce the range of this ability needs more to 22 meters down from 28 to ensure they follow the function of other abilities such as scatter shot or Fiery Grip. These abilities will now ignore the target's physical or spell resistance to ensure they have a unique auxiliary effect. So you're going to be javelin people straight through the chest now. Puncturing Strikes. This ability in its morphs will now snare the nearest enemy, hit by 40% every time it deals damage, rather than snaring the nearest enemy for 70% on the final hit. This ability in its morphs will now properly be considered direct damage attacks rather than hybrid direct damage and damage over time. Note that some item sets may still erroneously trigger from the attack and will be fixed in a future update. So Jabs is actually going to start to kind of scale off of, you know, one thing and not, you know, several things like it currently does. Updated the visual effect of this ability to better sync up with the attacks. Spear Shards. This ability is more now will last 10 seconds up from 8. Again, 5,000 cost up from 3,000. Reduce the dot by 53%. Blazing Spear now in increases the initial hit by 10%, but the dot is decreased by 60%. Backlash can now critically strike. My lord. Purifying Light, the heal over time from this ability will now, as a tooltip continuates, always apply after the effect ends, which means that such as being purged, being recast, or ending naturally, the light cannot be stopped and shall purify all. This means that the purifying light will now count for one less negative effect from purging. I don't know how I feel about Backlash being able to crit. I go back and forth. On one camp, I see people that go, well, Templar, you know, Templar Burst with Backlash should obviously be able to crit. But I also saw someone say something that makes sense. Backlash technically copies all damage received on the opponent. So technically speaking, if you crit somebody, that critical damage is already being factored into Backlash's burst. 
So technically speaking, that, that skill is kind of critting twice. So I can see both sides of the coin. I want to know what you guys think about this in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think about backlash critting. I'm not sold on how I feel about this. I will say, though, that with the rest of the changes to Templar based off the rest of the classes, I might be playing a lot of freaking Templar next patch. I might be playing a lot of my Templar next patch. Uh, Eclipse got nerfed. Maybe not as much as I would have liked, but it still was nerfed. Which is good. Fix an issue where reapplying this ability to with Core Morphed to the target before the original expired could cause issues with the cooldown of this effect. Living Dark. This morph now only snares the target for 60% rather than immobilizing them. Thank God that immobilize was so toxic. Reduced the healing by approximately 10%. So, small healing reduction on Living Dark. Unstable Core. Reduce the initial and secondary damage dealt to this ability by 44% and the final hit by 25%. These attacks now have a 5 meter radius around the target as the visuals insinuate. Solar Flare, Solar Barrage, increase the duration of this morph for 2 8 seconds up from 6, but decrease the dot damage by 30%. Sunfire, fix an issue where the major prophecy from this ability is morphs would occur if you dealt damage rather than upon the activation. Increase the base duration of this ability to 10 seconds up from 8, increase the cost to 3,000 up from 23,676, and then decrease the dot damage by 60%. Cleansing Ritual, Ritual of Retribution, reduce the dot damage by 33%. Restoring focus, fix an issue where this ability was unable to be cast while silenced. Rite of passage, fix an issue where this ability could cause health desyncs when used while taking heavy damage. Animal companions, Warden got a lot of good changes, man. Betty Netch, this ability is once now grand brutality and sorcery at a base, but this ability no longer restores magic every time while active. These abilities now remove one negative effect from you every five seconds. Reduce the duration to 19 seconds to 22 seconds on the base. Blue Betty restores magicka. And again, a 25 second duration. Bull Netch restores stamina, 25 second duration. So the cool thing with Betty now is literally the only thing you choose with the morph is what resource you want restored. And that's awesome. So you get major sorcery and brutality from both abilities. It's just like, okay, do I need more Magicka? Let me get Blue Betty. Do I need more stamina? Let me get Bull Netch. That's super cool. You get to choose like, if you're like a Magicka character and you need more stamps to stay, you can run the Bull Netch, no problem. And vice versa as stamp. Very cool. This gives a lot of Betty um, customization, which I like. I like this, man. This is a good change. That purge is going to be strong as shit, though, dude. That's going to be so good. Dive. This ability has received new functionality to help it stand alone. It's a spammable, but it has received some reductions to the base of functionality that were in place to make up for the fact that it lacked any gameplay. So reduce the damage by 10%, but increase the cost of 2,700, up from 2,400. If you are at least 12 meters from your target upon dealing damage with these abilities, you now set them off balance. Cutting Dive, this morph no longer reduces the cost of this ability beyond the standard stamina cost reduction, and now instead applies a bleed for 7 seconds if they are off balance, which can stack up to 7 times. I don't know how I feel about this. Um, I think it's really cool. I, I, I didn't test, I forgot to test whether or not... You have to just maybe, like, you have to set the target off balance from range and then can stack the bleed even if you use cutting dive and melee range? Or do all stacks need to be stacked up from range? I'm not sure. I didn't test that. Um, if it's the second way where it's like you have to only apply the bleed from range, I'm meh on the skill. But if it's like, okay, you need to get the initial bleed up um, on the off balance target. Oh, wait. No, I don't think so. No. If you're at least 12 meters from the enemy... You set them off balance, but now if you just deal the damage, it, oh, oh, no, 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 I'm wrong. No, I'm wrong. So you have to set them off balance from 12 meters away, but after that, any, like, consecutive cast after that will apply that, will apply that bleed regardless of rage. Okay, so then in that case, I think that's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, no, I like that. Cutting dive was always super boring. It was always just like, wow, deals stem damage. Like, that, that was it. Now the, the skill actually has some personality, which I do like. Swarm. Increase the cost of this ability and morphs to 2970 to encapsulate the new functionalities. These abilities now apply minor vulnerability for the duration of their dot. But the dot was also nerfed by 50%. Growing Swarm. This morph has been redesigned into a stamina-based ability that does bleed damage. The swarm no longer spreads to nearby enemies upon completion, but now in instead deals damage to enemies in an area around the initial target. This damage is roughly 25% of the initial target's coefficient. So Growing Swarm. We got some more. We got some bleed dins going on here, man. Cutting Dive. Dealing a bleed. We got Swarm with the bleed. If dots weren't so terrible next patch, this actually might be good. But I like the I like the concept. The concept here is what matters. All they have to do is do some number tuning, and this will be really, really nice. 
Winter's Embrace, Arctic Wind. This ability and its morphs have now regained the original function of Arctic Blast and deal frost damage in a 6 meter area around the caster while the heal over time persists. This damage now scales your maximum magic and spell damage to prevent compounded power from tanks. Arctic Blast, this morph can no longer converts the ability into an awkward projectile stun. Instead, this ability has inherited Permafrost's old functionality, because they nerfed Permafrost, where three enemy, uh, enemy hit three times in rapid succession with, with the ability would stun them, and this stun cannot be blocked. Crystallized Slab, this morph now has a 500 millisecond internal cooldown on the damage return and magic refunds him to other abilities such as DFS and Living Dark. Gripping Shards got a 33% damage nerf, Winter's Revenge. Um, and then Permafrost, this morph no longer stuns enemies who are hit. By multiple times with this effect, but instead increases the duration by one second per rank up, up to 12 seconds. The snare is now 70% up from 40%, which isn't going to be as bad as it sounds because snares are now additive. And each tick of damage now applies the chilled status effect to enemies hit. So those are the class changes. Those are the class changes. Um, I kind of already went over my thoughts in that little bit of a rant earlier, uh, which I, I am sorry about. I, did, I just needed to get that out in a video, man. Uh, but I want to know what you guys think, man. What do we think about the changes? Do we like them? Do we hate them? Do we like them in concept but hate the number tweaking? How do you guys feel about the new personality that came to Warden, Sork, and Dragon Knight? Do you dislike them? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, we will be covering weapons in the next video. I will be covering weapons in the next video. For this, I wanted to cover some of the uh, base combat changes as well as the uh, weapon skills. So, uh, I wanted to go over those, some of those base combat changes because they explained why this, the, the class changes were changed the way they were. If you guys like this patch note review, please smack a like on it. I would appreciate it very much. Uh, and if, for, to keep up with the rest of the Dragonhold PTS, please hit that sub button as well as the bell to keep notifications on. And thank you all so much for watching. I very much appreciate you stopping by. As always, I'm Dots Gaming. I'll see you all in the next video.